Welcome to the One Chart at a Time video series. I'm your host, John Schwabish. Now, we are starting to talk about how to plot distributions in your data, and you're going to see some overlaps between how we plot, say, categories or compare categories and also uh, show distributions within our data. And so on today's episode of the series, we have Christine Zhang from the Financial Times who's going to talk about the pyramid chart. And at its core, the pyramid chart is a bar chart, but they are primarily used to show changes in distributions, particularly age distributions. But as Christine's gonna show you, there's lots of ways to use and utilize the pyramid chart. So I'm gonna let her take over and tell you all about this data visualization type. Thanks so much, John. Today, I'm going to talk about pyramid charts. You can think of a pyramid chart as essentially a special kind of diverging bar chart. So for example, the most commonly used pyramid chart is the population pyramid. A population pyramid is the quintessential way for demographers who study population changes to display the age distribution of women and men in a population, for example, a country. You could do this with two bar charts, one for women and one for men. So you would have age categories on the x-axis going from young to old as you go from left to right. And on the y-axis, you could plot the number of people in each age category. So you'd have one bar chart for women, where the y-axis is the number of women in each age category, and one bar chart for men, where the y-axis is the number of men in each age category. A population pyramid is a way to combine two, these two charts into one by showing women and men side by side. You can do this by flipping the axes on the bar charts so that now you're plotting the age categories on the y-axis going from the youngest at the bottom to the oldest at the top. For the x-axis, you'd show the population numbers for both women and men by making it a diverging x-axis. For example, to the left, you could put the female population and to the right, the male. This allows you to see the age distribution among women and men in the population at the same time. And if you plot multiple population pyramids for different time periods, you can see how that age distribution has changed over time. This can tell a very compelling story. One particularly effective example I recently came across was this one from my Financial Times colleague, Chris Campbell, showing the evolution of Japan's population. Chris uses an animated GIF to stitch together Japan's population pyramids using historical data from 1950 to now. And then he uses population projections from the United Nations all the way up to 2000, uh, sorry, all the way up to 2100 to show what Japan's future population structure might look like. The result is a powerful picture of an aging and shrinking population. In 1950, Japan, like many countries after World War II, experienced a baby boom. This is reflected at the start of the animation, when the population pyramid has a very typical pyramid shape, where the base, the youngest age categories, is very broad, and the top, the oldest, is very narrow. As time goes on, however, this structure evolves as Japan's life expectancy rises and fertility declines. With the animation effect, you can literally see the population age as the bars in the youngest age categories move into the older age categories. And you can see that those younger categories are not replaced in the same amounts in future years. Chris's animation pauses at 2020 and leaves an outline of what Japan's population pyramid looks like currently. This allows him to show what the country's population structure could be by 2100, given the current trajectory. And here we see a dramatic picture of declining population as the oldest age groups die out and the youngest age groups continue to shrink. For demographers, the population pyramid is an iconic way of showing population data and using it to tell stories like this one for Japan. It's best used when there are these kinds of dramatic overall changes, and the population pyramid can make those trends very easy to see. I will point out, however, 
that a shortcoming of the population pyramid is that it's actually quite hard to compare the length of the bars on the left and the right. For example, it's hard to tell here if there are more women or more men in the overall population, as well as in each of the age groups. So if your goal is to show those kinds of differences, you might want to consider using another chart type, such as a bar chart of the overall surplus or deficit of women or men by age group. Even though the population pyramid is the classic type of pyramid chart, there are other kinds of pyramid charts as well. And in recent years, the pyramid chart has been used in a lot of creative ways. This is a graphic by another colleague of mine, John Byrne Murdoch, showing how the 2012 and 2016 presidential elections played out. Here he has two pyramid charts, one for the 2012 election and one for 2016. Instead of putting women on the left and men on the right and age categories on the x-axis, each of these pyramid charts shows the states that the Democratic candidate, Barack Obama in 2012, Hillary Clinton in 2016, one on the left, and a block for each state the Republican candidate, Mitt Romney in 2012, Donald Trump in 2016, one on the right. And the x-axis here is the margin of victory that the candidate won the state by. It is a little more complicated than your typical population pyramid chart, because in this case, each block represents a state, and the height of the block represents the number of electoral votes the state is worth. In the US, a candidate needs 270 electoral votes to win. You can see, for example, how thin the margins were in 2016 in the key states that brought Donald Trump to victory. Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania were states that Trump by won by less than a percent percentage point, but that were crucial for bringing him over the 270 vote threshold. This year, Joe Biden won those same states back, but also by very thin, albeit slightly expanded margins. As I record this, some states are still certifying their results, so I don't have the final numbers. The point is that John's chart, inspired by a similar concept published in the New York Times for the 2000 election, is just one example of another way in which pyramid charts come in handy for data visualizations. And I hope to see more of them in the years to come. Thanks again for having me. Thanks to Christine for that great video, that great explanation of the pyramid chart. Uh, hopefully you better understand how to use it, how to make it, and how to read it. And so now going forward, you can have that visualization type in your graphic toolbox when you're making your next graph. Okay, so until next time, this has been the One Chart at a Time video series. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time.